Navigating Non-Union Projects. Hey everyone, I'm Matthew Cornwell with Get Taped here in Atlanta, Georgia, one of Atlanta's original audition taping services, which I co-own with my amazingly talented, beautiful wife and best friend, Brooke. Oh, wait. There it is. And now on to our topic. Navigating Non-Union Projects. I covered a lot of tips for non-union actors in a previous video, which I will link in one of those cards up there that I just sort of learned how to use. But since it's probably the case that most of you watching are actually non-union actors, I realized that there was probably more I could cover on this topic. Let's start with the actual self-submission process. In a nutshell, be careful about just willy-nilly submitting for everything. If you're unrepped or you have an agent but are still self-submitting, great. But as you navigate those available breakdowns, you want to develop a discerning eye for which projects are going to be worth your time and energy. And how can you tell? Well, I like to think about each opportunity in three different ways. And as long as it checks one of these boxes, then you're good to go. And those three boxes are, does it pay well? Is this credit needed? And will it be artistically fulfilling? For instance, I would suffer through special effects makeup on a Star Wars fan film for no pay because it will be artistically fulfilling and it'll be sort of a cool credit as well. So just make sure that the project checks off at least one, hopefully, all three of those boxes. Oh, and if you're at the very beginning of your career, it's fine to add a fourth box, which is just, I need set experience. Everyone has to start somewhere. But once you've been on a set or three, you want to develop that discerning sixth sense for whether or not this project is going to be worth it. This will also help your mindset when you're at the booking and maybe things aren't as great as you had hoped. For instance, you're doing a boring teleprompter, non-union industrial for a medical device company, but it pays a thousand dollars. That'll perk you back up when you're feeling stressed out halfway through the day and you still have nine more scripts to get through. Now let's talk about when you've been given an offer for a role in a non-union TV or film project. Since you don't have any union protections, you have to be super vigilant about those protections for yourself. So first things first, before you accept their offer in writing, gently request to see the full script if they haven't already provided it. Because listen, there are some crazy scripts out there. And even though the audition sides seemed simple or innocent, you may have extra scenes or you may not have a full context for what the entire project is about. And that could change your mind on whether or not you even want to be a part of their project once you've read the whole thing. You just want to have all the information at your disposal before you contractually obligate yourself to the project. Reading the whole script will also help you discern once and for all whether or not this project will be artistically fulfilling. Because admittedly, that's maybe hard to discern when all you see is a breakdown or maybe you now have the audition sides. Ooh, and pay close attention to how the production navigates this step of the process. If they are slow to respond to your requests for additional information, and it's a writer, director, producer, star who seems to be the only person communicating with you, that could be a red flag it is not going to necessarily be organized and well run once you get the set. On the flip side, if a production assistant or a second AD or some other kind of coordinator reaches out to you promptly and gets you all the information you need, well, that's a good sign that once you're on set, things will be well run. First impressions are everything. And if the production doesn't seem to care about their first impression on you, well, that's useful information. Okay, let's stay on the contract and talk about the terms. Hint, everything is negotiable. First of all, don't say yes to anything unless there is a written contract or some sort of agreement that both parties will sign. You need a record of the agreement so that both parties are protected and that expectations are set going into the production. Once you have that contract, read every word. If you have an agent, you can involve them at this step because trust me, it will be worth that commission you pay them. For example, uh, 20 plus years ago, I had an independent film production that wanted to hire me and the producer was a lawyer. So he sent me a seven page contract. And so I went to my agent and said, help. And not only did she help, she was able to negotiate a 20% commission on top of my payment for herself. She also got it into the contract that I got to keep all my wardrobe. 
Boom. Thanks, Misty. The point is to not just understand every word of the contract, but also to know that you can negotiate. On the producing side, I can attest to this. Once we were shooting a web series and we traveled to New Orleans for an episode and we wanted to bring one of our actors, well, he couldn't take off work and lose that income. So we negotiated with him to pay him what he would have made at his job so that he could join us for the weekend in New Orleans, even though we didn't have a budget to pay actors for that web series. On another project that we shot, we had an actor who was based in LA, and so we negotiated to fly them in to Atlanta so that he was able to participate in the project. Again, not something that was budgeted for, but we wanted him, so we negotiated. That said, if the production was upfront about it being a no-pay project, don't come back to them at the deal memo and say, hey, I will only do this for $1,000 a day. But let's say the shoot location is more than 60 miles away from your house. Maybe you can negotiate fuel or mileage. In short, they want you for this role. They've offered you the role. So that means you have some leverage to ask for a perk here or a bump in pay there. And let's say that you've willingly agreed to work for free. That means that one of those other check boxes has been checked. It's either artistically fulfilling or you need this credit. So make sure you're going to get a copy of your footage. Have it written into the contract that you are guaranteed your footage in some form. It might be just that you get a copy of the finished product. They might be courteous enough to send you just your scenes. Or if the production falls apart, you might at least have a contingency in there that they send you the raw footage so that you can find an editor to finish cutting your scenes together so that it's salvageable for your demo reel. And hey, if it turns out that the editor is on set during production, because maybe they're also the director or they're a producer, etc., make friends with them. Because if you end up with their contact information, you can email them directly 18 months later when you're wondering when the project's going to be finished. But at least if you have something in writing that is agreed upon by both parties, it gives you leverage to ask for that footage when the time comes. And that time will come, guaranteed. And here's an IMDB tip. If the production company that is doing this project has no credits on IMDB, then don't expect to get a credit on IMDB from this project. On the flip side, if they have a nice resume of credits on IMDB already, then make sure you keep them honest about getting your credit up there at the appropriate time. Again, the producers should be happy to reward you, especially if you're working for free on this project, because that is the payment, so to speak, for your services, is that you get that credit and you get that footage. Okay, so let's talk about a very broad topic, which is protecting yourself on a non-union set. In case you didn't watch the other video that I did on this topic, I'll summarize some of the red flags to look out for on a non-union set. When you get that full script, Remember, you're going to ask for that at the time of the deal memo. Scour every page that your character is on to make sure that nothing seems a little iffy. For instance, if the story takes place in summer, but your shoot dates are in winter, you're going to be wearing short sleeves and you might want to make sure that you're going to be kept warm in between shots. What if your scene takes place in a forest at night? Hello, tripping hazard. Or if it just takes place in a forest, I got a tick once from shooting in a forest. That's no fun. What if your scene just says interior car, but it's a moving shot? Are you the actor who's going to be driving while delivering dialogue? That's dangerous. What if the scene is on train tracks or you have to horseback ride or there's gunplay or heck, it takes place on a gun range and so forth and so on. I can't possibly list all the scenarios that would be red flags, but the bottom line is you need to become discerning about all of these potential scenarios so that you can ask questions ahead of time and make sure that you're going to feel safe on set. Because on a union set, you can be assured that there will be a stunt coordinator and an intimacy coordinator if there's nudity or sex scenes. But on a non-union set, you don't have those guarantees. And so you need to stand up for yourself and make sure that the production is going to be on the up and up. And speaking of intimacy and nudity, well, it's a very uh, broad topic. So go back to that other video I did. I, I covered some good nuggets there. 
Okay, so with all those red flags, hopefully I haven't scared you away from working on a non-union project because they can be great experience. So the next question becomes, how long should you be working on these non-union sets before you start to say no to them? Well, the obvious answer is when you join the union, because you'll be forbidden to ever work on a non-union set again. But if you're still non-union, you just have to trust your own taste and judgment. Going back to the first point about discernment. You'll get better at reading those initial breakdowns and figuring out if this is going to be worth your time. You'll also get better at doing research on the director, the writer, the production company, so that again, you can just get a sense for whether or not this is the team you want to be joining. So in summary, whether or not you have representation, you need to be your number one advocate for yourself on these non-union projects, full stop. And I know it's tough to be an artist and a business person, but there's no other choice. I mean, you can involve your agent, like I said before, but don't expect much help if it's a non-paid project because it means they don't get a commission. And even with an agent's help, only you have your best interests truly in mind. Okay, that's a lot on this topic, but it's certainly not everything. But as I've said many times on this channel before, this industry isn't easy. There are so many nuances to this career. But hopefully these videos on our channel help to demystify this process, and specifically in this case, the non-union phase of your career. If so, be sure to like and share this video with a fellow actor or 12 that might benefit from these tips as well. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on set.